my name is Johnny Ping. I am with Casa del Toro Pitbull Education and Rescue, and today I'm here to talk about introduction to the Kennel Enrichment Program at Indianapolis Animal Care and Control. Casa del Toro is fortunate to have Indianapolis Animal Care and Control as a partner, and we are able to operate within that facility. I will be speaking about the Kennel Enrichment Program specifically as it is tailored for Indianapolis Animal Care and Control. We have shared this program with other shelters in the state of Indiana, here in the United States, and also internationally. So if you would like to learn how to customize a program for your specific shelter setting, please visit us at www.cdtrescue.org. The Cattle Enrichment Program at Indianapolis Animal Care and Control was founded in 2009. Casa del Toro's founding member, Lori Adams, was an animal control officer for 20 years, and one of the issues that she came across was trying to communicate and enrich the lives of animals who were held in investigation kennels. So if you can conceptualize, a dog would be dropped off as an owner surrender or be brought in as a stray to the shelter and they would be held for four to seven days uh, without any contact whatsoever. Then there were also dogs who were quarantined. They were there as investigation holds for court cases or even worse, dogs who were bite cases and had notes on their kennels to say not to touch these animals. She felt that there was, had to be a better way to be able to communicate, reach out to these animals and try to alleviate the kennel stress that they were experiencing while they were at the shelter. We have since developed this program to include all of the animals at the shelter and hopefully the tools that we will describe today can help you join the team that can better suit these animals while they are here at the shelter. All of the duties at the shelter integrate together, gravitating around the same goal to help out the animals. So this goes from the staff that works at the front processing adoptions, to the staff that cleans kennels in the back, people that do the laundry, people that mop the floors, and also us who choose to work with the animals. The kennel enrichment program techniques that we're gonna go over today specifically has to do with handling dogs at the shelter. The goal of the Kennel Enrichment Program is to improve the quality of life for the shelter animals while they are here at the shelter. We want to keep animals engaged through positive mental, physical, and sensory stimulation. And we also want to enrich every animal every day. Global Daily Activities is the level one of Kennel Enrichment Program. These activities can be done by any volunteer at any time without special training. First one is all dogs can get out of their living quarters every day. This also includes daily treat sweeps and daily scent therapy. For treat sweeps, it is as simple as grabbing a handful of treats and walking down the kennel aisles and rewarding the dogs with treats. The caveat is that we ask that you monitor the treats that you give to puppies. If puppies are too young, they probably shouldn't get large treats or very rich treats. Also, if there are dogs that are kenneled together, please don't treat these dogs as it might be a fight trigger for a resource. Otherwise, unless there is a prohibition written on the dog's kennel card to not feed them, every dog in the kennel should get a treat. This helps reinforce the dogs that there is something positive that can come from the kennel experience. You can also develop the treat sweeps more advanced uh, and couple it with a training method, which is to say, once you get to know the dogs on the adoption floor, you can come and click for quiet, click for four on the floor and treat using a positive only clicker training method in addition to treats, if this is the type of behavior you would like to graduate your dogs to. For the daily scent therapy, Scents can be made out of essential oils and be put into spray bottles like such. Just a few drops and the rest of the bottle filled with water and then you have a scent therapy that can be used up to 30 days in the kennel. There's even a rotation that you can map if the scent therapy is going to be used every day. So whereas you switch the scent to keep the dog's interest most peaked. For example, you would have sandalwood on Monday and cinnamon on Tuesday or in scent on Wednesday and so on and so forth. Please note that the essential oils that scents are made out of in this particular recipe are not recommended for cats. Essential oils are toxic to felines, so this technique should only be used in the dog portion of your kennel area. 
When it is time for the daily scent therapy, there's a couple different options. You can take your scent bottle and walk up and down the kennel aisles. I typically like to spray the gutter, so I'm not spraying the dogs in the face, but I'm spraying the scent in the, the gutter along the aisles, and I do both sides of the aisleway the whole length of the kennel. Another way you can do is spray the area above the kennels so the scent wafts down onto the dogs. You can also spray fresh blankets with scent and then deliver our individual blankets into dog kennels. And finally, we have a PVC tube with holes cut in it that has a scented blanket inside of it. So these can also be delivered to kennels and collected later on. One of the benefits to having this tube is that if the dog that you are delivering your scented blanket to tends to shred up their blanket a lot and then it gets stuck into the drain, then you do not have to deliver a blanket that becomes then a dangerous obstacle for the drain or the staff, but then you have your PVC tube that does not get caught in the drain. Additional tests that any volunteer can do on the first level basis would be, for example, bathing dogs, or distributing new toys or new blankets to dog kennels, um, and also offsetting the laundry usage when you collect blankets and collect toys. When you are distributing toys, keep in mind that there are different toys that you can deliver to the dogs. There are balls, there are bones, there are kongs, there are soft toys, there are rope toys, there are soft balls and plush toys. There are different functions that each of the toys deliver for the dogs. Currently, it is not permitted to leave toys inside the dog's living quarter kennels. So if a toy is delivered to a dog, it needs to be collected the same day, within a few hours before you leave the shelter area. And with regards to the toys that you choose, just keep in mind what the dog might do with those toys and how much supervision they would require. For example, for plush toys or for very soft balls, for something that a dog can shred up easily, you may want to monitor that dog until you are certain that this isn't the type of dog that eats anything that comes into its mouth. So until you are certain that you don't have a dog that is going to eat and swallow the toys, please monitor when you have soft or other toys that can be destructed into tiny pieces. For the soft toys, I like to build these things. These are very easy to build out of scrap cloth. This was built out of a yellow t-shirt and a blue t-shirt. I literally tie the two pieces together and then I just knot them. You can get as elaborate as you like with this. Um, you can use three or more pieces. You can braid it, you can make it thick, you can make it skinny. They actually make good cat toys as well. One of the things I like to do with the soft toys is simply I give the dog the toy. It's something that they can carry around, they can sink their teeth into, they can chew up, they can shake, um, and, and they love it. Some dogs just like to carry toys. Other dogs like to chase toys, such as a ball. A ball can really help bring out a dog's prey drive. Some dogs want to have, again, a soft toy, something they can sink their teeth into or they can carry around. Even the dogs that like to destroy the toys, this helps mimic a visceral sensation that they would otherwise get from destroying something that they had caught in the wild. And similarly, toys that have squeakies in them that make a squeaky sound, those sounds mimic the cries of prey that again would have been caught in the wild. So some dogs get to be really excited and aroused and mentally stimulated by these type of play items. I can say from experience that not all dogs are interested in all toys and not all dogs are interested in the same toys, but for some dogs, finding the right toy can really make the difference between breaking through stress and helping them alleviate that stress through having a positive mental stimuli. Also, the Kong toys are great interactive toys that a dog can have and play with on their own, especially if it is equipped with peanut butter or frozen food and things of that like. And in addition to leaving these items uh, briefly with the dog in their kennel, you can also play with the dog with these toys outside of their kennel as well. In wrapping up the level one kennel enrichment activities is removing solid waste from the kennel, although you need to do it in a safe and sanitary manner as prescribed by the kennel staff, and also offsetting laundry usage, especially if you're doing a blanket supply. 
You can also clean the toys and sanitize them if you have distributed toys to any of the dogs.